Hey, what's up? This is Odolena from Odolena Digital and today we're going to talk about offline conversion tracking and importing conversions in Google Ads. Welcome to my channel. Be sure to subscribe. Every Sunday I post a new video on topics like pay-per-click marketing, online advertising. Sometimes I talk about my favorite books and courses as well. So you will get a new video every single Sunday. I'm really trying to get to a thousand subscribers so I can start monetizing my channel and invest some of these profits into um, better equipment, better quality, better software and really grow the channel a lot. So if you like the content, please subscribe or invite other people who you think might benefit from it. So today's topic is conversions in Google Ads. So first of all, for those of you who are completely new to Google Ads, what is a conversion? So conversion can be anything that you decide, any action that is positive for you and you want users to take when they're on your website or not on your website. Uh, and you want Google Ads to drive this action. So it's a way of measuring really whether your campaigns are working or not. So this is abs absolutely a big, big must for any, any smaller business or bigger business which is using any kind of paid advertising because from the moment you pay for a click, let's say someone clicks on your ad and comes to your website and you don't know what's happening after that, what happened after this click, you basically are never sure whether your campaigns are working or not. So this is super, super important. What you can track, you can track online visits, you can track clicks on certain pages, uh, someone watched the video, you can track submitted forms, let's say someone submits uh, a quote on your website, requests a callback, submits a form, downloads a brochure or kind of freebie, um, and becomes a lead, so they end up in your database. You can track phone calls, so people calling your business through ads, uh, just uh, clicking on the ad and calling it or going on your website and calling through a, a phone number that you have set up there. You can track also people who visited your store. If you have enough food traffic, you can check my video on how we actually track store visits. Uh, and there yeah, you can track uh, basically any kind of activity which is valuable to your business. So now I'm going to talk a lot about uh, how to track the offline conversion. So let's say when someone comes into your database, let's say they submit a form, they become a lead. What happens after that is considered an offline conversion because this is not happening on the internet. Let's say your sales team might give them a call, they come to the office, have a conversation, maybe it's a car dealership, they go for a tour, see the cars, try different cars. Um, then there is assessments, then there is qualifications, like whether they can get a loan, whether they can get funding, and essentially someone buys. So the whole goal of tracking offline conversions is to understand how many of your leads and forms and which campaigns from which keywords actually brought these valuable, valuable actions that you actually, this is the whole reason why you are advertising for is actually to get this sale done. But you're never sure what happened and which actually campaign and what action uh, actually brought the user to this point. Uh, if you don't track offline conversions. Tracking offline conversions in Google Ads is quite easy. However, it's not super simple. So how it works is you go in the interface and you select tools, uh, then conversions, and then you create a new conversion. So in that case, you can create an import. So an import means that you have a list of, um, of different actions, of different customers, and you can import these lists directly in Google Ads. So you can do this manually, or you can schedule to do it automatically. You can do an integration with your uh, CRM. Let's say if you're using Salesforce, for example, or Sales Cloud, uh, you can do a direct integration. And what this does is actually Google matches the data that you provide to the data that they have and actually shows you where the sales that you recorded in your database match with the clicks that Google has recorded in uh, their database. Here is an example of kind of like a workflow of what I'm talking about. So let's say someone clicks on your ad, all right, click. What they do have is something we call GCL ID or Google Click ID. So this ID is basically a string of numbers and letters uh, which is associated to this user, to this click. 
Uh, and this is a unique one, so nobody can recognize the user or get any kind of personal information based on the GCL ID. So what happens then is, let's say, they fill out a form on your website. In uh, the case when you want to import offline conversions, what you have to do is install a small snippet of code, which is actually creating an invisible form, invisible field in your form, which collects this GCL ID. What that means is, let's say you have name, email, phone number, uh, so the user fills this themselves. And then there is a hidden form, a, a hidden form field, which is the GCL ID, which if you've installed correctly this uh, snippet, will be collected from the form. So the user doesn't see that, it's a hidden field, and you just collect the GCL ID. And when this uh, actually lead goes into your CRM, you have to prepare a field in your CRM for the GCL ID. So what you can see in the CRM is, let's say, the name, the email, the phone number, and the GCL ID of this person. Then what happens is, from your database, let's say the sales team acquire access these leads, they call them, they speak with them, they do what they do, um, and some of them convert, some of them don't, some of them buy. Uh, so you have all these data. You have the name, you have the email, the phone number, and the GCL ID, and now you know the status, whether they are interested, highly interested, bought already, in the progress of buying. So you have all these different stages. And what you can do now is you can take this whole list of data uh, with the status of the deal and you can import these back with the GCL ID in Google Ads. And this is the beauty of the process. So what happens then is basically Google is able to match which of these uh, clicks based on the GCL ID ended up into the status of uh, sale that you are importing. So let's say you can create um, a, a goal, for example, a closed deal, and you will see how many of the sales of the clicks that you have uh, generated with your ads ended up into closed deals, or how many of the clicks that you generated with your ads ended up into highly interested and qualified leads. And you can see on campaign and keyword level where actually these high quality leads and high quality deals are coming from. Let's look at several scenarios on how this can practically work out. Let's say we have a business here which has high sales volume. They get a lot, a lot of sales in a short period of time. Their sales cycle is not very long. So think of, let's say, a fast growing e-commerce with relatively cheap products. What they should focus on? They should focus on the closed sales. Let's say all the things that kind of slide off the shelf. So let's say one part they're selling off online, but they have another portion that they're selling in store. What they can do is they can import these direct sales and uh, track how many of them are actually uh, related to, um, to GCL IDs, to actually to clicks on ads. So here they can focus only on the closed sales. What they can track is everything else like phone calls, qualified leads, uh, submitted forms. However, this is kind of more of an FYI because their original goal is closed deals. And the reason for this is because they can optimize for them and they have so many of them. The life cycle is very short, so they can purely focus on this and they will have enough conversion data to optimize for this. Second scenario. Let's say this business has relatively low volume of sales and long sales cycle. So think of something like insurance company, for example. Let's say they have a bit less volume and it takes some time for someone to sub from submitting a form to actually buying an insurance. Let's say they have to shop around, uh, maybe check a few other options and then essentially they decide for one insurance. Also, there is a qualification time in the insurance company. So this kind of breaks the, the, the sales cycle a bit longer. And there are multiple interactions, let's say, with the sales teams. What they can focus on is the qualified leads. So let's say from the forms that they every day they receive in the database, 
uh, you can automatically import back the ones that are labeled interested, highly interested. They have high chance, they're rated by the salespeople having high chance of uh, up as a closed sale. Why you cannot optimize here for closed sales is because you have not that many. Uh, so you will have only few conversions and it will be difficult for you to actually optimize only for this because of the longer sales cycle and there might be also some other obstacles around the way that have nothing to do with the quality of the lead. Let's say someone is very interested but uh, for some reason maybe they move country. It's foolish to actually not to optimize for this kind of quality lead uh, because they might come next year or the year after but only to focus on the closed sales because there is a chance of randomness here. So it's good to keep track on the ones that are closed sales and on the form submissions and the phone calls that are coming in just to make sure that the teams are getting kind of enough to work with. But I would optimize more on the campaigns that are bringing uh, these qualified leads. And let's say we have a third scenario where we have low sales volume, long sales cycle, and we add to this a long qualification period. So let's say in this case, the qualification is, let's say someone is applying for a master degree or an MBA, and they have to cover certain requirements like passing GMAT tests. They must have certain level of work experience, certain qualifications, the finance, the time, uh, the right place in their career in order for them to take the decision to choose one school out of so many others. So you can imagine that this kind of leads will be difficult. So you will have relatively low level of sales. You will have long sales cycle. So minimum one year or a few months at least. And then you will have a long qualification period during which there is a lot of interactions, a lot of back and forth, online, offline interactions, uh, speaking with the team. So this type of example, uh, it's very difficult for you to call, focus only on the closed uh, deals and, and the qualified leads just because uh, you won't have that many. So what you should focus on is the phone calls and the forms. So make sure that you have enough volume coming in for your teams to work with. However, you have to keep track on how many of them are getting as a closed deals, how many of them are qualified leads or engaged with your content, let's say they're engaged users. So this kind of gives you the balance between the two. So you cannot only focus on the very successful leads, but you kind of know where they're coming from. So you try to focus and to grow these campaigns, but you don't only optimize for closed leads just because it takes so many other things uh, and factors to close one lead besides the online interaction only. So this is all from me for today. Thank you so much for watching this channel. Please, if you like this video, like it, comment. If you have any questions or other observations, I'll be happy to have a discussion. Uh, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you with a new video next Sunday.